ABC begins rolling out the housing sob stories. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because, well, I've been predicting that we'll start to see more and more of these type of articles and particularly from the ABC about the poor person that just, well, bought too high or the banks lent them too much money. Woe is me. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, if we had more government regulation, more organizations, more authority, more taxes spent on things, then people wouldn't have to be, I don't know, responsible for their own lives. Maybe I'm just, I'm just too old, old and old-fashioned guys, you know? That, that's what it is. I'm just not up with all the hip new uh, expecting others to be responsible for you. <laughs> that, that's just it. That's what the young kids want nowadays, isn't it? Probably what they teach them in Journalism 101. So let's, anyway, let, let's have a look at this article. Because while I'm being facetious, there are certainly people that have, well, borrowed at the peak and bought at the peak. And now with rates predicted to go up today again, they're going to, um, well, they're going to have to make some lifestyle changes, honestly. And that's not a bad thing. Okay, in the moment, it may feel bad, it may feel uncomfortable, it may feel like you can't make it. But once you get through it, once you, you know, you learn some new skills, you learn what actually is a necessity and what's a luxury, you'd be amazed how, how, uh, how many things are a luxury when they need to be. You know, it can be for the better. So let's look at this. RBA increases to interest rates mean home buyers who bought at the peak are facing rapidly rising mortgage repayments. Who trusted the RBA or who didn't expect this to happen? Who, I, I mean, there must be some people that believed what the RBA said. I guess I probably would have until I started seeing stuff like this. Just their forecast falling, uh, falling over again and again and again and again and again. And that, that's one advantage, I guess, to being an architect. We're trained to look at precedent. And, well... If I showed you this precedent, would you bet on the next prediction being correct? Maybe if you're a gambling man or woman, you think, oh, well, you know, they got it wrong so many bloody times. They're bound to hit it right this time. It's like, you know, with five blacks come up, you're betting on red on the roulette wheel. But that's not really how probability works. So while some Australians may re rejoice at the idea of a drop in house prices, we'll see a correction in house prices. It's not going to be enough for the people that really need it to be affordable. It won't be enough. Interest rates, rate rises means homeowners face the prospect of their assets dropping in value at, a, at the same time their mortgage repayments steadily increase. Well, what, what's going to happen is we're going to have fear of negative equity, and that will deter people from well, being as courageous as they were in the past to jump in. But I, honestly, I'm pretty confident that most people will do whatever they can to hold on to their home. And most investors will jack up the rent to hold on to their investment property. It's the Australian way, guys. And those who bought recently at the peak of the market are more likely to have the most left to pay off on their loans, meaning interest rate rises will cause them the most pain. Bobby Graham bought a house in January in Hobart's outer suburbs for slightly more than he'd hoped to pay after saving for the past five years. Now, Hobart, or Tasmania, housing has just gone it's gone nuts. It has just gone crazy. I remember as a student working for an architectural practice here in Brisbane that their head office was in Tasmania. And I remember going to Launceston for uh, some training and I just was really jealous at how cheap the housing was in Lonnie. And these were nice houses. Sure, you had to know how to start a fire but you know, for your fireplace because it's bloody cold, but still, not anymore. Just months before his purchase completed as... As late as October, the Reserve Bank Australia was still saying it expected interest rates would not rise until 2024. There have now been three months of straight rate rises and another due today. I mean, this is the thing. People will ask in the, in the comments, you know, when's the time to, you know, should I buy now or should I do this? You need to scenario yourself. Uh, worst case, what would happen if rates go up, 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 up? And then plan a contingency for it. And if you can deal with it, then it's up to you. No one can tell you when's a good time to buy or when isn't. It's up to you and your, your individual financial situation. What that means is stepping, well, stepping up 
and getting in the good old Excel and just doing some doom scenarios. If it's you, you know, a couple, and what happens if one of you got fired, lost the job? Are you going to be able to make it through? What happens if, if one of you loses a job and then you have a hot water system that goes out and you need to replace it? Do you have an emergency fund? there? How long could you go if the shithole hits the fan? I guess that's the, the stoic approach coming out there. You need to plan for these things. Do, do people still go to the Boy Scouts, you know, dib, 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 dob, 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 be prepared? Is that a, are that a thing anymore? While he's not struggling to meet payments, very good, he says the changing circumstances have meant he needed to adjust some things, his expectations. He's had to make tweaks to his lifestyle and reassess his living expenses. Now, that is exactly what's going to happen. We're not going to see, guys, interest rates going, even if they hit up to, you know, what, 2.5%, 2753 or 36 or whatever the banks are predicting it might reach. You're not going to see a whole flood of people rush to sell their houses to get away from their mortgage. They're going to do everything they can to reduce their spending. Everything they can. They're going to throw all their money at their house. And where's that going to manifest? Well, first, in everything that's discretionary. All the discretionary stuff. And, you know, that's going to be going out. We saw now we've got a new beer tax. So what are people going to do? If they still want a beer, they'll probably homebrew it. Or they'll get it cheaper. Or rather than going out with friends, the friends come over and you just get a six pack from the bottle shop. Have a barbecue, have a picnic. You know, people are going to adapt. And then they might realize, oh, wait a minute, I prefer this. <laughs> and that will manifest in decreased spending in certain sectors of the economy and some people are going to lose jobs. It's the perfect storm. You pay the higher price because you bought at the peak of the market and then there is an increase in interest rates, he said. And it becomes obvious that everything else is becoming more expensive due to inflation. He described the increases in his mortgage repayments as a bit of a kick. As part of his changes, he's had to cancel several interstate trips planned for this year in a bid to save money and meet home and mortgage commitments. You pay so much of your income just to maintain your home, he said. His advice to others in his situation is to take a thorough look at the household budget and adjust expectations. I mean, he's making sensible lifestyle decision changes. But, well, here's the other, the other side of the coin, guys. Everyone wants to own a house. You're kind of looked down upon as a renter in Australia. You know, you, um, it, it's there. There is a cultural difference there. But, you know, sometimes they may be smarter. They don't need to, if you're renting, you don't need to worry about the maintenance. You don't need to worry about all these other costs or expenses. Sure, you've got to deal with the rent and you could be kicked out at any minute. But, you know, home prices are dropping, but interest costs are going up. So, according to figures released on Monday by property analysis firm CoreLogic, median house prices in most capital cities are falling at a steady rate and are expected to continue the trend. In Hobart, there was a 1.5% drop in house and unit prices in the past month, in line with similar falls in Sydney and Melbourne. CoreLogic compares the downswing to the same drop experienced during the GFC and the 1980s recession. Ah, the recession Australia had to have. There you go. The RBA is acting to stem inflation by increasing the cash rate, which in turn is being passed on to consumers via higher mortgage rates. So uh, considering how are they going to catch up to the US with their cash rate uh, when we've got so many imported products and that's going to really, be, you know, supply side inflation impacts. Uh, We'll just have to watch. We'll have to watch. I mean, do you reckon they're going to be able to stem inflation? Let me know in the comments. I'll put a poll up and get people to vote if you think they'll actually be able to stem inflation by increasing in, increasing interest rates. I think they'll be behind the ball for a time. The RBA is expected to lift the rate again when it meets today. So I'm recording this at 2.09 before it's been announced. I'll probably release this video after. So let me know what happened if we got a 0.5 or a 0.75% increase or a 0.65. The head of research at CoreLogic, Eliza Owen, warns potential home buyers while they may feel like they're buying a house at a discounted price, the reality of interest rate increases will see more spent on repayments. The interest you pay on the debt you take out will be more, she said. 
financial financial counselors expect demand spike. Yes, well, and this is the thing. The default response to this is financial education, financial education. We need to be taught this at school. Our curriculum is overloaded. We need to reduce the curriculum here in Australia. We need to reduce the amount of work these kids are doing. They're, they're, I'm Here in Queensland, I don't even think they have the same number of recesses that we had when I was a kid going to school in Victoria. You need to have time to play as children, not just constantly one activity after another, because play is really important to, to developing a lot of social skills and, and just learning. But I guess that's, the, that's my old boomer thinking coming out there, isn't it? You know, brought up in the 80s where we could play. Imagine that, going home after school and playing. And, I mean, come on, we still had computers. We'd play on the Nintendo. That's when you'd share Nintendo games. You'd take your Zelda game and give it to someone and give you Kid Icarus. You'd share it with, the, with your friends. I remember when we got a 286, guys. Oh, boy. That was, that was the bee's knees. Had a hard drive. VGA graphics kicked ass. Anyway, back to this. <laughs> Anglicare financial counsellor Fiona Moore said home buyers had experienced years of high prices with a lot of people borrowing money while interest rates had been low. With interest rates rising and property prices decreasing, it's going to cause a big problem, she said. Anglicare is expecting its client list to grow. People should rationalize their spending, such as personal loans, credit cards, and look at options to cut other payments down, she said. What you want to do, you want to look at, there's two strategies, really, to dealing with money. You know what, I'm going to, or debt. Snowball. Snowball. Wait, let me look it up. Um, what do you have it here? Okay, you've got... There's a nice picture. Well, the snowball method. List all your debts, make the minimum repayments on everything, and pay extra on your smallest debt. Once that's gone, pay to the next one. Now, this isn't the most cost-effective way to do it. The smarter way would be to put all your money off your, most, your highest interest debt. The advantage of the snowball technique to paying off your debt is that you get the psychological benefit, the victory, one after the other. And that's... You know, a fantastic idea. I mean, here, I like this picture here looking at the two approaches. The snowball and the avalanche. Avalanche is paying the one with the highest interest rate. This one, the avalanche, is the smarter way to do it. But snowball is probably the better way to do it, depending on how much self-control you have. If you've got a lot of different little debts, snowball's probably better because you need those victories. And then it gets addictive, and you keep just hitting them one after the other after the other. I, I suggest the same thing with mortgage. Uh, just chucking extra micro payments on it. Every time you get five bucks here, ten bucks here, you know, twenty dollars here, just chuck it off the mortgage. Boom, boom, boom. I'm I'm doing that now with my pocket money investing. Every little bit of money I find, I'll chuck on any shares that'll pay me a dividend and just you know, build up a little stack. And the goal is how can I turn pocket money into, I don't know, pay for my internet for the month. There you go. Boom. That's a thousand bucks a year, twelve hundred bucks a year, then you turn it into two thousand. Just slowly build that up. And, you know, as your little side investing, even if, if you're starting out, if you're starting out, everyone needs to start somewhere. And then once you, you're out of debt, you know, then you focus on throwing more money at bigger things. And that's where you look at the Ramsey approaches and the barefoot investing and all these other ones. We're, in some ways, we're, we're quite lucky because you've got access to so much more information. You know, here they're going, the National De De Debt Helpline, 1-800-007-007. And they're asking for survey responses here. Now, we've got so much more access to information than ever in the past, which is really good. So, well, let's finish up and have a bit of a talk about this. I just realized I've been crypto mining as I've been recording this video. So let me know if there are any frame stutters or if my 3060 can handle it. It should. Bloody well cost enough. So, guys... Here we go. I mean, we've got these articles coming out. The ABC is always going to paint it in a certain way, always going to be a bit of a sob story. I hope the people that, well, that do these articles, that go in them, at, you know, you'd hope they'd at least get some compensation or a stipend or something to at least put onto their debts. But what we're seeing here is that it is going to affect the quality of life of some people, and that's going to have a material impact on the economy. 
Now, will it be enough to address inflation? You tell me. Anyway, take care, guys. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next episode of Heiser Says. If you want to support the channel, there are a few ways you can. You can financially support us via YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Buy a pocket squares. Call us if you need an architect. And otherwise, take care. I'll see you all next time, guys. I went to buy concrete today at Bunnings. The factory needs to get parts from Germany that makes the, the concrete. So I got the last bags in three Bunnings. There you go. World leaders in, uh, in construction here.